Welcome to Movie Zoom. Today we will watch a South Korean action horror film from 2016, titled Train to Busan. Beware of spoilers. Let's dive in. A truck approaches a toll booth as it's being sanitized, with several workers cleaning the area in hazmat suits. The truck driver passes through the toll booth and accuses them of slowing him down, but the workers assure him that nothing is wrong and that the area is just being sanitized as there was a small leak at a nearby nuclear plant. As he passes the toll booth, he is distracted by his ringing phone and accidentally runs over a doe. After inspecting the scene, he gets back in his truck and drives off. However, the doe staggers to its feet despite the crash and turns to reveal that it is infected. Meanwhile, in Seoul, Siok Woo is a busy fund manager who barely has time for his daughter Suan, let alone his divorce. After a stressful day at work and accidentally buying Suan the same birthday present he did last year, Suan reveals that she wants to visit her mother in Pusan. Siok Woo is initially reluctant due to work, but his mother convinces him otherwise by showing him a video of Suan singing Aloha O at a school recital, she stopped singing in the middle of the song, which he couldn't attend due to work. Out of guilt, Siok Woo books the next KTX train bound for Busan the next morning. Early in the morning, Siok Woo drives Suan to the station, only to nearly crash into an oncoming horde of ambulances and police cars. As Siok Woo ponders what could be going on, Suan reaches out the car window and catches an ember in her hand, prompting Siok Woo to notice the burning building in the distance. He remarks that there's something bad going on, but drives to the station regardless. They board the train, which is also occupied by the tough working class husband Sang Hwa and his pregnant wife Seung Kyung, a high school baseball team, rich but selfish CEO Yan Suk, and a pair of elderly sisters, In Gil and John Gil, and a homeless man who seems to be aware of the zombie situation. As the train prepares to leave, a spasming young woman boards the train with an enormous bite on her leg. Outside the train, station manager then signals the KTX to leave, only to notice a group of people on top of the stairs of the station, screaming at something unseen. Suan watches through the window as the manager is quickly ambushed by a rabid human, which only she witnesses. Frightened, Suan gets up to go to the bathroom. In the lower numbered cars, a train attendant comes across the infected woman, and she attempts to resuscitate her, only for the woman to complete her transformation. The zombie then latches onto the attendant's neck, who runs into the baseball team's car in a panic. The two then fall to the floor, now both zombies. The two proceed to attack most of the baseball team and creates a horde of zombies in the process, only four students escape, baseball player Young Guk, his crush Jin Hee, and two unnamed boys. The zombies race towards the upper compartments and infect everyone in their path, Su and unwittingly walks towards the lower ones, looking for a bathroom. Siok Wu awakens and notices that Suan is missing from her seat. He then receives a call from a co-worker, who informs him that violent riots have erupted around Korea. Soon enough, a group of panicked passengers from the lower compartments rush through past his seat, screaming and running. Now realizing that Suan may be in danger, Siok Wu runs in the opposite direction and sees Suan standing right in front of an oncoming horde of zombies. He grabs her, and they are chased by the horde, but Siok Wu successfully reaches his compartment and attempts to barricade it, nearly locking Sang Hua and Seung Kyung out in the process. The survivors struggle to barricade the door, then realize that the zombies do not know how to open it, and merely charge at the sight of humans. Seung Kyung uses water and newspapers to cover the windows, which remedies the situation by causing the zombies to think they are not there. The conductor reassures the survivors over the intercom that the train will not go to Busan, but stop at Digu station, as he has been informed that the military has been dispatched there. Yan Suk calls his company friends and asks about the situation at Digu, which Siok Wu overhears and deduces from it that all arriving passengers at Digu will be forcibly quarantined. He makes a private call to a co-worker and convinces him to pick him and sue and up separately so they won't be quarantined. The train then arrives at the abandoned Digu station, and Siok Wu takes Suan towards the east exit, where they would be picked up, while the others go towards the main exit. The homeless man follows Siok Wu, having overheard his phone call. The three go down the hallway, where they see a soldier in the distance. Relieved, Siok Wu tells Suan to stay where she is, and he rushes towards the soldier for help, only to see that he is injured. The soldier begs them to help him before a horde of infected soldiers round the corner, trampling and consuming him. The rest of the survivors head out the main exit. Towards the bottom of the escalator, the survivors see a large group of uniformed men and realize the soldiers are all infected and the deployment has failed. Several of the passengers are eaten and infected as they scramble back up the escalator and back into the station. Siok Wu, still inside the station concourse and facing zombies, tells Suan to run. 
She does so, and bumps into Seung Kyung and Sang Hwa, who are rushing back to the train with the others. Seung Kyung takes Su and then runs to the platform, while Sang Hwa fights off the horde with Seok Woo, Young Guk, and the two other baseball players. Once they manage to lock the exit door, they're onto the train. Young Guk's two friends are attacked and infected when they reach the platform. Meanwhile, Jin Hee, Yan Suk, and a few others have successfully boarded the train. Seung Kyung and Su An are also boarding when a glass bridge above the train shatters and sends zombies raining onto the platform. One of the zombies falls between In Gil and John Gil, separating them. In Gil is forcibly dragged aboard Jin Hee's compartment, and she watches John Gil, Seung Kyung, and Su An run in the opposite direction. Seung Kyung, Su An, John Gil, and the homeless man barricade themselves inside a bathroom in one of the lower infected compartments, while Yong Guk, Seok Woo, and Sang Hwa successfully get onto a safe compartment. Sang Hwa calls his wife and realizes she is trapped in the bathroom with a few others. Unwilling to leave them to die, the three of them begin fighting through the lower compartments to rescue them. In the process, they discover the zombies are blind in the dark and only react to sound. They use this to their advantage and manage to rescue them, and they all run together towards the first compartment, where Yan Suk, Jin Hee, In Gil, and the manager are. Yong Guk texts Jin Hee that they have rescued the survivors and are headed towards her compartment. When she happily tells the others, they react with hostility and decide to lock the door to their compartment to prevent the group from entering. With the door locked, Yong Guk attempts to break it open, while Seok Wu and Sung Hwa struggle to keep the zombies from entering on the other side. Realizing that there isn't enough time, Sung Hwa tells Seok Wu to take care of his wife and leave him behind to distract the zombies. Seok Wu tearfully apologizes and lets go of the door, dragging Su An and Seung Kyung towards the barricaded door. Before he is consumed, Sung Hwa manages to tell his wife the name he chose for their unborn son. The locked door is broken down, and the survivors pile into the compartment safely. There is a second door inside the compartment, which they close, although Jong Gil is not fast enough, and she is eaten. Realizing that Sung Hwa and Jong Gil could have survived as well, if the group hadn't barricaded the door, Seok Wu angrily punches Yan Suk and demands to know why he did such a thing. Unwilling to answer, Yan Suk lies to the others and insists that Seok Wu and his allies are infected. Instilling fear inside the initial group that barricaded the door, they force Seok Wu and the group that just entered the compartment, now joined by Jin Hee, into the hallway between their compartment and the conductor's car. Once they are forced out, Yan Suk and the others use their necties and shirts to tie down the knob and prevent them from coming back in. In Gil, still shocked and silent from seeing her sister die needlessly, notices John Gil's face in the crowd of zombies in the door window. She tells her infected sister that she lived a long and fulfilling life and realizes that the compartment group's actions have led to her sister's death. Out of anger and defeat, In Gil opens the door, allowing the zombies to flood the safe compartment. The survivors inside the hallway can only watch as the group is eaten inside the compartment, they see shadows of the passengers desperately clawing at the door they just barricaded in a cruel twist of events. The conductor receives a radio notification that Busan has succeeded in holding off the zombie infection. However, as they approach a station before Busan, the train is cut off by debris on the track. The conductor informs the remaining survivors on the train over the speaker that he will find another train on an unblocked track to drive to Busan and that they should follow him, but wishes them luck as they will have to exit the train and survive crossing the zombie-filled tracks. He exits his cockpit and finds an empty path, successfully discovering a cargo train. He starts it up and begins going down the track towards Busan, searching for survivors on the tracks. Seok Wu and the others exit the train, and unbeknownst to them, Yan Suk has survived the horde of zombies in the compartment by hiding in the bathroom. He also hears the conductor's announcement and fights his way out of the compartment, but several zombies continue chasing him as he gets off. Meanwhile, Seok Wu's group is making their way to the cargo train. Suddenly, a burning freight car rushes towards them, and Jin Hee and Yong Guk are separated from the group when the runaway freight rams into the cars of a nearby train, which falls and blocks their path. They go into one of the next train cars to cross over to the other side through the door, not noticing that Yan Suk, who is being chased by a zombie, is following them. Yan Suk enters the car and throws Jin Hee behind him, sacrificing her to the zombie. Yong Guk fights the zombie off and collapses to the ground, cradling the spasming Jin Hee in his arms. Yan Suk ignores them and manages to pry the door open and runs towards the cargo train. As Jin Hee chokes and begins to turn, Yong Guk begins to cry, asking why fate had to be like this. He apologizes to Jin Hee for not telling her how he felt about her as she fully turns and consumes his face and throat. 
Yan Suk runs towards the cargo train, but twists his ankle on the tracks, and one of the zombies following him manages to bite his ankle. The conductor rushes off the car to help, but Yan Suk betrays him and throws him aside to the zombies like he did with Jin Hee. He ignores the conductor's screams for help as he boards the train alone. Meanwhile, the homeless man, Su An, Siok Wu, and Seung Kyung were on the other side of the wreckage, trapped under a train full of zombies. The windows of the train threaten to collapse at any moment. Siok Wu finds an opening under the train and begins to climb under it, but a part of the train collapses and seals the hole before the other three can make it through. The impact also shatters a window, and a small group of zombies tumble out and crawl towards the three. However, the homeless man sacrifices himself to the zombies at the last minute, allowing enough time for Siok Wu to pull the debris away and for Seung Kyung and Su An to escape. They run towards the cargo train and get on the outdoor platform of it. Siok Wu approaches the cockpit but backs away when he sees Yan Suk in the conductor's seat, milky eyed and infected. He initially shuts the door, but Yan Suk opens it in spite of being a zombie, the infection has not reached his brain. Yan Suk approaches Siok Wu and begs him to take him home to Busan, speaking like a little boy and reciting his address and the name of his mother. Siok Wu tells him he is infected, and Yan Suk is momentarily shocked and he weeps, but within seconds, he is fully turned. Siok Wu begins to struggle with the zombified Yan Suk and nearly falls off the ledge of the car. Suan screams on the other side of the car platform, which attracts Yan Suk, and he attempts to attack Seung Kyung and Suan. However, Siok Wu intervenes, and his hand is severely bitten. He manages to throw Yan Suk off the car, but notices his injury. Aware that he will turn very soon, he seats Suan and Seung Kyung in the cockpit and tells them how to use the brakes once they get to Busan Station. He then tries to leave the car, but Su An begs him to stay and reveals that on the day of her recital, she did not finish singing Aloha O, because she didn't see Siok Wu in the audience, she had been saving the song for her father. The two have a tearful farewell, and Siok Wu holds Su An's small hands in his for a moment, before throwing them aside and locking himself out of the cockpit. Su An begins to scream and cry for him to come back. As the infection spreads, Siok Wu sobs as he walks towards the end of the train car, clutching his bloody hand. Recalling his happiest memories of cradling her and holding her small fingers and toes, as he did in the cockpit before, the infection takes hold, his eyes going wide and veins going dark. However, in spite of being fully zombified, Siok Wu continues thinking of Su An, and he smiles happily towards the sky, before falling off the car and onto the tracks. The train car finally arrives at the tunnel leading to Busan Station. However, the track is blocked off with debris. The two exit the car and begin walking down the tunnel, not aware that they are being watched on the other side by the Busan military. One of the snipers reports their approach to his superior and is told to shoot them down, as they cannot tell in the dark whether they are infected or not. Just as the sniper is about to pull the trigger, Su An begins to mournfully sing Aloha O to rally the exhausted Seung Kyung to walk to the end of the tunnel. Hearing her song, the soldiers realize they are not infected and rush to their aid. The end. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.